Hey guys, I hope you are having a great day and that you're doing something you love. Today I'm sitting here again, of course, with buttons. And after I did my video on bullets the other day, several people sent me messages if I might do one on buttons similar. So I wanted to do this video today. I think it might help out some beginners into metal detecting and relic collecting and maybe even some intermediate type relic hunters who are just learning about their buttons. So with that said, let's get into how to identify your buttons. Now there are some obvious features on a button that might help you to identify it, namely the design on the face if there is one. Now I'm not going to go too deep into this because there are literally thousands and thousands of different types of designs on the faces of buttons. Some of them military, some of them civilian, some of them private purchase. So to go into that would take me a very, very long video and I'm not going to be able to do that today. But what I would like to go into is all of the other features of the button that might help you to identify it. Because sometimes you can't identify what's on the face and it might be that if you are able to identify these other features in the button, you may be able to identify what the button is. So let's have a look at those features and some tools to help us do that. And the first thing I want to talk about is reference material. Now I use the Record of American Uniform and Historical Buttons Bicentennial Edition by Alpheus S. Albert. And this was referred to as the Button Bible for a long time. It's a really great book. But there's a lot he does not go into in this book. Um, namely, there's not a lot of dates in here. So it's sometimes hard to date a button using this book alone. The other main book out there is Tice's book. It's the Tice button book. I believe it's called Uniform Buttons, Uniform Military Buttons of the United States or something like that. Don't quote me on that. Um, but his name was Warren Tice, and if you look for the Tice button book, you'll come up with it. Very expensive book. Great book, though. And the final book I will refer you to is the American Military Button Makers and Dealers, Their Back Marks and Dates, by William F. McGuinn and Bruce S. Bazelon. Now, this book is an amazing book. It has the back marks from nearly all of the American button makers, um, and it has a lot of information on dates. Also, what buttons were made by which button manufacturers. So this can be an invaluable resource in dating and nailing down exactly who made your buttons. And we'll get into that some more in just a minute. The next thing that becomes obvious when you look at your button beyond the face of the button is the style and shape of the button. Now, there are basically three main categories of buttons that I'm going to go into. And each one of these categories has uh, some subcategories, and we'll talk about those a little, but we'll start with one-piece buttons. Now, there are a lot of different designs of one-piece buttons. There are your typical flat, plain, flat buttons, and these are oftentimes made of brass, although they can also be made of other materials, such as pewter and tomback. Now, tomback buttons are a mixture of brass with a high copper alloy and between 5 and 10% zinc. And the higher the zinc content, the wider that tomback button is going to be. So, those are another type of one-piece buttons. And there are also uh, one-piece buttons with designs on the front of them, such as this War of 1812 Militia button. And there are domed one-piece buttons such as this Eagle Artillery button found up at the button mine. Another thing is the manufacturing style of these one-piece buttons. Some of them were put on a lathe and spun, as is the case oftentimes with some of these tomback buttons. Um, some were cast, and then the, the shank was either attached separately, or in the case of like this Block I infantry button, uh, from the Civil War. I believe this shank was cast into the button and then drilled out. So there's a lot of different distinguishing features that you can notice as you start to look into these buttons. The second type of button we're going to talk about are two-piece buttons. So we had one-piece buttons, now we have two-piece buttons. And these buttons are what you would find in a typical general uh, service 
Civil War button, like this Eagle button. And it had a brass front that was stamped with the design and a brass back. That brass front was rolled over the back and it would attach onto the back there. And then the shank was either affixed by soldering it on or by running it through the inside of the button and letting that hole in the button catch the two little legs of the shank and keep it in place. They call those floating shanks. So those are some distinguishing features. And another thing you'll notice about this is this is very domed. And there was actually two-piece buttons that were very flat. So some distinguishing features there. The last type of button we're going to talk about is a three-piece button. And this button consists of a brass face that was stamped, a brass back, and a brass rim which holds the front and back of the button together. And this is a staff officer button from the American Civil War. And it was very common for officers and staff officers to have these three-piece, more fancy type buttons. And these carried on into later in uh, the history as well. And they had these all the, ways up, all the way up into the 1900s. Um, for schools and universities and things like that. And they actually still manufacture three-piece buttons. Papa Bear, what's wrong? Are you hot? The next tool that can help you determine what type of button you have is similar to bullets, and that is to take a measurement of the button. Now, you measure these in millimeters, and when you're measuring one of these buttons, you're going to want to measure around the outside rim if it's a round button. Of course you're only going to get one measurement there. And then if you're measuring the width of the button you're going to measure from the top of the button to the back of the button. Not to where the shank goes but to the back of the button. And if it's a square button or a rectangular button of course you're going to take a width and height measurement on those. Once you have those you can start to look in your references and also, you can look for the back mark of the button. Now, the back mark of the button is possibly the most important feature in determining what type of button you have. The reason being is oftentimes buttons can have the same face over a period of many, 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 many years, as is the case with eagle buttons from the U.S. military. The face stayed very similar for a long period of time, and the way you can tell how old the button you have is, is by using that back mark. And the more back mark you can get on a button, the more you're going to nail down when and who made the button and where it was made. So that is possibly the single most important feature on a button besides the image on the face of the button. So I hope that that helped you guys out a little bit. And I hope it gave you a little bit better idea as to how you can identify some of the buttons you have. And if not, how you can describe the buttons to someone who might be able to identify it for you. So, another day in the life, looking at all these buttons, what can I say? For those of you guys who are here every day, um, next couple days are going to kind of probably be brief. It's, it's really busy, as you know, it's the holiday season. A lot of friends and family are in and out of town. There's just so much going on right now. And doing these in-depth daily vlogs really takes a lot of time out of my day. I don't know how many of you guys realize, but some days when I'm out doing a shoot on location, I'm working like an 18 to 20 hour day doing these. So it's really busy and it's hard to visit with friends and family. I don't mind suffering, but I don't want them to suffer. So bear with me over the next couple days. I'll see you guys tomorrow.